Thanks for sending your question. Um, it looks like we don't actually have to factor out this expression. We just need to list the possible rational roots. Um, so that will simplify things for us. Um, the way we're going to go about that is we're going to examine how many possible positive and negative real roots there are. And then we are going to look at the possible rational roots down here. So the maximum number of real roots we're going to have in this equation is 4 because I'm going to look at the degree of um, the leading degree in the equation, basically. The maximum number of positive real roots I'm going to have is going to be the number of sign changes I have in the original equation. So this really has a plus in front. So it looks like we only go to um, from plus to minus or from minus to plus once up here. So I will have um, one positive real root, max, and then the maximum number of negative real roots, I find by taking all these x's, I can put a parenthesis around where they were, and I'm going to input a negative x instead. Then I'm going to go ahead and simplify. Everything that's got an even exponent will just change back to a positive, or stay the same sign, I'm sorry. Um, so this would stay as negative 2x squared. This one would change sign. So we would get plus 16x minus 15 is equal to 0. Um, once we simplify, we're going to examine how many sign changes there are in this expression. So let's see, we have 1, 2, 3. So we have a maximum of 3 real roots. So we could have positive or negative roots. The, positive, the possible rational roots, therefore, can be positive or negative. We find those by looking at the factors of the constant term and the factors of um, the leading coefficient. So what we call p is going to go be the factors of our constant term. So if I'm going to factor 15, um, possible factors of 15, I could get 1, 15, 5, 3, and that's it. And it looks like these can be positive or negative. Q, those are the factors of the leading coefficient, meaning the number in front of the first term in our equation. Um, so the factors of 1 are, of course, just 1, plus or minus 1. So our possible rational roots we find by taking p over q. So our possible rational roots could be 1 over 1, 15 over 1, 5 over 1, or 3 over 1, plus or minus either way. And that's all of them. Those are all of the possible rational roots for this equation. And that's actually going to be your final answer for this problem. So thanks for sending your question, Jacob. And I look forward to answering more of your questions using SnapMath in the future.